I've determined my products are subject to the export administration regulations. Now what? The next step is to determine the classification of the item you want to export. By classification, I mean identifying the proper Export Control Classification Number, or ECCN. It's like the Rosetta Stone for the Export Administration Regulations. Once you know the classification, the rest is simple. Well, simpler. I know my HTS code and Schedule B number. Does that help? Unfortunately, it's not possible to determine an ECCN based on the HTS code or Schedule B number. So how do I get my ECCN? All ECCNs are found in the Commerce Control List, which is available on the Bureau of Industry and Security's website by hovering the mouse over Regulations from the blue menu bar, and selecting Export Administration Regulations from the drop-down menu. There are three ways to determine the Export Control Classification Number. You can self-classify, ask the manufacturer, or submit a classification request to the Bureau of Industry and Security. Before starting the self-classification process, one needs to understand the structure of an ECCN and the technical parameters of the item as most ECCNs are based on technical descriptions. It also helps to review the instructions in Part 738 of the EAR to learn how to use the Commerce Control List and read ECCN entries. An ECCN is a five-character alphanumeric code. The first character is a number from 0 through 9. This number stands for one of the 10 broad categories in the Commerce Control List. The second character is a letter A through E that indicates the type of item or product group. Consider the third, fourth, and fifth characters as a sequential listing of different items within the category and product group. If your items are subject to the Export Administration regulations but not specifically described on the Commerce Control List, it likely falls into a basket category called EAR 99. A lot of consumer goods are designated EAR 99. Maybe it would be helpful if we walk through an example or two. Well, I have a couple of diesel engines for farm equipment that I'd like to send to Mexico. Perfect. The first step is to determine which of the 10 categories you think the diesel engine would fall under. Any ideas? Hmm, not a clue. That's understandable. Let's take a look at the categories. Category 9 covers propulsion. That ought to be a good start. Now that we have the category, we need to determine the product group. The engine would seem to fit in the end item and equipment grouping, so it's likely to be in product group A. Now we can start reviewing ECCN entries at the beginning of 9A of the Commerce Control List. Here we go, 9A990, diesel engines. Well, my engines are far below the performance standards listed in A, B, or C. That's a great point. In reviewing ECCNs, you must read through the entire entry. If the ECCN contains a list of items controlled broken down into subparagraphs, it's important to read through these subparagraphs to determine if your item fits the parameters of the ECCN. In this case, we're looking at subparagraphs A, B, and C. Since your engines do not meet the technical specifications under these subparagraphs, that means your engines are not controlled under ECCN 9A990. Continue to check the remainder of Category 9A and any other applicable categories and product groups. If your items are subject to the Export Administration Regulations but not described in the Commerce Control List, then they would be designated EAR 99. Makes sense. I also have this cool optical sight I want to send to my uncle in Canada. On first glance, I don't see any categories that look right. If the optical site is subject to the EAR, then take a look at Category 0. That includes miscellaneous items, too. Looks like it would be in Product Group A. Here it is, 0A987. Well done! Now you know the basics of how to self-classify an item. The Bureau of Industry and Security has a decision tree tool on its website to assist with self-classifying items by clicking on the Exporter Portal link from the home page. On the Exporter Portal, select Decision Tree Tools. CCL Order of Review is the first option on the list. The second way to get the ECCN is to contact the manufacturer or producer of the item. If the manufacturer has exported in the past, they might know the ECCN. 
Some companies have even made their classifications available on their websites. What if I'm going nowhere with self-classifying or the manufacturer has no idea? You can always submit an online request to the Bureau of Industry and Security to classify the item for you. To do this, you will need a SNAP R account. This is the same system used for submitting license applications. How long does that take? The commodity classification process takes on average two to four weeks. You can include up to six line items per request, and there is no fee for a classification request. Once you know your eCCN, you're ready to determine if you have an export license requirement to export your products. I recommend watching Export Controls A Quick Start Guide for those steps. As always, the Bureau of Industry and Security's Office of Exporter Services is here to help. Please feel free to contact us if you have any further questions. Thank you and happy exporting!